everyone, V the Amazing Greek here, uh, heading out to the campsite today. And uh, we got beautiful weather. It's like 55, 56 degrees, supposed to get up to 65. It's nice and sunny. So I'm gonna go and uh, work on trying to add the walls to the shelter today. And uh, kind of in the mood to do some craft stuff, like make some benches, things like that. So uh, I don't have an unlimited amount of time, but I am going to try to do some, some good out here. So stick with me, and uh, hopefully I'll get something interesting done. All right, I've already loaded one in the chamber because as I'm driving up here, somebody has uh, put, I don't want to say an alarm system, but they've added something here to see if somebody's coming down the driveway, and I don't think my dad did it. That's my fence. I have to drag it, open it up to here. Look, looks like a tree's growing out of the ground. Somebody put that there to see if when I open this gate, I don't pay attention and this will be gone. So uh, I'm gonna pull that stick out and I'm gonna set it aside and I'm gonna put it right back when uh, I leave. And then I'll know what's going on. Um, I'm always cautious when I come out here. But if somebody's coming out here to test and see what the hell's going on. They think they're going to steal. They got another fucking thing coming. So I'm going to start bringing my AR with me. And uh, just to be safe. But that's the only thing I see right now. I thought I saw down the road where something drug through the leaves. Like something was hanging off a trailer maybe or something like that, but uh, I don't know. i just showing you guys that. Be aware. All right, everyone. So we are walking to the site, and uh, I got my bandana on. Last time I was out here without it, I had so much tree material in my hair. I was expecting walnuts to fall out my ass, you know, so it took me two days to get that crap out. Uh, I got my new cold steel GI Tanto strapped to my LBE. Uh, I need to do a review on that for you guys, as well as the other five knives I've bought and failed to do anything about. Um, as I was walking up here, I remembered I wanted to come out here and see about the storm damage, see how the shelter held up, and then it dawned on me that maybe my uh, paranoia is getting the better of me in my older age. As I was moving that stick from the driveway, I looked up and I was like, well, this is a half dead tree. Maybe the limb simply fell out of the tree. So, <laughs> but like the old saying goes, just because I'm paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get me. It looks pretty good. Everything's there. We're in the shade here out of the sun. Let's see if, and then see, we got trees above. Kind of protect us. Oh yeah. Okay, it rained. We had a severe storm pass through Friday night. At one point they had 128 mile per hour winds. Uh, so we were fearing a lot of tree damage and things like that. But, it looks like all the shingles held up. I don't see standing pools of water. And with this being in the shade, means we don't get direct sunlight. So it's not going to evaporate as quick. So that's a good sign to me. Oh, I'm very happy. I'm very happy with that. Alright, let's see. Next thing I want to see is the inside. How dry we are it's last time when it was raining yeah see now it's nice and firm to the touch it's not sloppy that's good that's good whereas out here it's a little softer to the touch and of course I was walking around in there uh, so that may have compacted it down a hair but I was also walking around out here so I'm gonna take it as a good sign so I'm gonna take off my ruck and uh, get to work, take some measurements, possibly tie a piece of rope 
off to the back leg and come however far forward I want and tie a knot in the rope so I know what kind of when I cut the trees down sorry about that uh, where I need to cut them and stuff so I wonder what side the wind was coming from heavy that would have been a good thing to be out here but if I know the winds are coming from one way I could put one wall and that'd be protection from the prevalent winds whichever way they come damn well, you don't want to be outside when there's potential for a tornado, so what are you going to do, you know? All right, I'll look around, see if I can see some signs of what was happening. I'm going to get to work because I want to do some stuff, so you guys stick around if I'm not boring you. Okay. First thing I got to do is clear all this brush out of the way so I can put limbs. Uh, I'm trying out some new gloves today. I, I don't think they're going to work, but... So I'm going to clear all this out so that the sticks that we want on the inside can lay flat. And then I can put this brush back up against it. But I don't need it in the way right now. I have been using the uh, Tanto. It is a good knife. And uh, the only thing I don't like is by securing it to my LBE, I can't take it around with me. So I'm probably gonna buy a second one. They're only $30 uh, and it's worth it to me. You should go to uh, Black Forest Ghost. He does a review of the GI Tanto. Uh, he does it in English and then he speaks in German also. Man, it's a good review. He does a very good review. Yeah, these gloves don't have a lot of dexterity. I think I'm going to have to break down and just buy some more uh, mechanics gloves. Alright. So I'll go get my first tree and then uh, we'll back it in here and I'll cut off, give enough room to lash it and uh, we'll start from there. Yeah, right here I have two trees where I could probably put it in between. I may be able to stack them and then just lash the tops. That'll save a lot of rope right there. So I need to get another stick by the back leg, like here, tie it. When I put my first tree, tie them all together, then I can stack them, like putting them in one of those coke things. You put your cokes in there and it stacks them. Then lash the top, and then uh, I can make up mud and mix leaves in it and pack the uh the crevices and stuff so wind don't get in so uh i'm gonna go find me a tree but i gotta make sure i get one that even after i cut it i can handle no point cutting something so big i can't work with it that would be pointless it's just tip of the day i can't even turn this camera off i'm gonna use the tip of my machete Alright, I cut down my first tree. Uh, it's much lighter than I thought. This type of tree, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, so I'm going to have to go for a different kind on the next one. Possibly bigger. I hope this one's long enough. Standing up, it looks tall. Then down here, I don't know. If it's a little short, I'll have to uh, use it as my top hole. Yeah, I don't think it's going to it does is barely wow damn that's all right it looked taller so I'll use that for something else yeah I can cut this in half and use it as a, a pole there to bind them together wow all right let me stand it up and see get an eye measurement there what I need I think I need about two more feet Okay, so we made a small adjustment. Instead of going this way, having to cut down the tallest trees and all this, I'm only 5'6". That's about the tallest one I need. So I went, I cut a straight pole, lashed it here, 
lashed it here. Now, cut my sticks. I'm gonna put another straight pull across the bottom. I'm gonna make my wall like this. That way I can tie it on, see? And uh, the shingles on this side, I'll be able to drape over like this, but I think I'm gonna put another, might leave those and then put another set over the top. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet. Uh, then I'll have to do something where something's coming over here. Down this way, they'll fit over once I tie them. It actually makes kind of like a gutter to draw stuff away. Or I could just uh, rivet another set to that or something. I don't know. But, uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. And when I cut the trees, most of them I'm cutting in half and get two pieces out of. So that'll work out pretty good. Uh, that's where I'm at, so I'm gonna keep on working. Okay, I've cut another straight and I've got it put in. It's holding right now with just pressure. Let me bring you around here and show you what I'm gonna do. So come around the back. What I did previously is there we go. Yep. All right. We're sticking out right here. I had nailed the shingle material to my support pole. Right now I've got it here. I want to go lower, uh, so I'm going to cut here so I don't have to pull all this out again. I'll give myself some room to stick out, plus mistakes, right here. Oh, and I'm wearing the $2 gloves versus the $8 gloves. These are awesome. My dad said he got uh, these in a pack of 10 for like $1.70 or something. So I guess they're less than a dollar a piece. Uh, so... They, they're more flexible still. It's a work glove, so you don't have super finger control, but uh, it's all right. Now, this knife is super sharp. Uh, I've stuck it into myself twice already. <laughs> once in the leg, once in the hand. Uh, it hurts. It's very sharp. Uh, the blade's very sharp, but the, the video, when it was raining and I was working with it, uh, by the time... I got home and I wiped all my stuff off and uh, brought it in to dry. I was already getting rust. So it is good steel, but you've got to take care of it. Um, so it probably wouldn't hurt for me to have in my, uh, my gear here some oil, even just like three-way oil, keep it wet, you know, cutting through these wet trees and stuff, keep it oiled. So, But it is a good knife, I love it. Uh, so I'm gonna back this out and bring it down that way I've got a wider gap between the poles that I'm lashing to yeah, down here. now the gloves help here because there's some staples holding this material together and I don't want to stab my finger like I've already done once like trying to put your tire back onto your bicycle when you were a kid after fixing the inner tube. <laughs> That's hard as hell without the right tools. Alright. Yeah. I can come back just a little bit more. Alright. I'm going to go lash the front and then uh, I'll lash the back. Alright. So I've got my pole set up here. I'm going to secure it to our tree. I'm just going to put a clove hitch. So you go over, make a cross, put it under. I got the end of the rope, a knot, so it doesn't fray, but it also helps hold. So go around the back of the tree, snug, and then I'm going to come over the top. I'm going to try to keep my rope in a bundle as I do this, but not fighting with it. 
can run the top. Now, you just loop it over there, back around the bottom. All right. Do this one more time. Now I'm going to cinch it up. So I've gone around, back and around. Now this time, when I'm going back around, instead of going around the tree, I'm going to bring my rope up over here. Shit. <laughs> Alright. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it around these bindings and just cinch them up real tight. That just takes any of the slack from my lack of strength out and uses the rope against itself. There we go. Alright. I'm going to make another clove here. Get my pressure. One, two, I've got an X right there. Now, the end of it, I want to come over and cross under that X. Boy Scouts Manual, it's one of the best books, man. It's all those knots and good info. I recently bought the Michael Hawk Special Forces book. If you haven't read survival books before, that one's, it's too, uh, it's just a cerebral book. A lot of mental stuff he talks about. Um, the SAS survival book is much more uh, user friendly, and so is the Les Stroud book. But, uh, I've messed up here. Yeah, the, uh, the Michael Hawk book was, it was just... A lot of talking about mental preparedness and you got to be ready to do whatever you got to do and all this uh, the mental part of it and the other books talk about that too but uh, that was that was a lot of it and then the it didn't have a lot of instructional pictures it just had your basic uh, army survival manual type uh, illustrations the Les Stroud book it has like him they're talking with you showing you how to do it uh, even better illustrations than the Boy Scout book and uh, the SAS book does very good too it uses uh, drawings and stuff versus where Les uses photos so they both they're both good books And then I just like to secure my rope. I'm going to feed it through any open spots I got and tie the end off just so I don't lose the tension there that I got. Here we go. Third time's a charm. I know it might be overkill, but I, just, I feel better this way. All right. Then I'll go do the back one. I won't have to use this thicker rope, but I got some, so I will use it up. All right. So Walking Dead is coming on tonight. I'm very happy about that. It's really good. This second part of the season it's starting off a little slow you know everybody's telling stories and having flashbacks and stuff but it's pretty good so far right. i wanted to say to uh fur and teeth oh damn somebody's shooting i hope the apocalypse ain't started I only got 15 rounds on me <laughs> That was a pretty good caliber right there. Oh. Must be target shooting it. Um, 
I know we had, we discussed on other videos before, kind of uh, hot topics, you know. But I was so glad when later in, uh, when I made other videos, uh, you were commenting, you know. And I was like, good, you know. Sometimes when we say stuff on the, uh, on the uh, text, it sounds meaner than it's intended to be, you know, when you're stating stuff. Especially for me, because I can be an asshole sometimes. And, uh... I don't mean to be, but, you know, sometimes I try to say something funny but mean. And uh, it just comes out mean. You can't see the funny. And that's bad. Uh, but I just wanted to say that, you know. Uh, Subo, I watch him. I've, we've had some sayings, but uh, everything's nice. And I like that, that we can do that on the Internet, you know. You don't have to just be mean. Well, that's that's going to be good there. I just wanted to say that, you know. I'm glad we can have discussions on the Internet. And still, you know, keep talk about other things. I don't have to be mad, you know, and stuff. It's, I think I went around one too many. I can't lash it. I appreciate everybody watching these videos and stuff. Uh, I wish I could comment on more of them back. But with the Google thing, I'm learning. I'm, I'm starting to, to do it. I think the first maybe 20, 30, 40 messages I, I, uh, I didn't respond to because I wasn't sure how to do it. And they're still shooting damn but uh i'm learning so i'm trying to respond more and sometimes i don't get all my messages even before this google plus thing i would answer a message and say yeah let me go reply and it the inbox would take you that's pretty good and uh I would go there and I'd have three, four messages I'd never even seen. So I'm sorry about that to anybody I didn't answer. I try to answer everybody. They must have got a good deal on ammo. They're just firing away. I would say go ask them, but hell, they might shoot you. So I'll stay here. All right. So I'm going to cut a few more poles and uh, lash maybe five, six. I think I got a few. I'm not going to do too much more. I think it's about four o'clock. I need to get home. Uh, see the baby and stuff. So. Alright, I'll keep going. I'll show you when I'm done with, with all this. Good lord. Alright, that is much quicker than the machete or the handsaw. Thank you, Dad, for that tool. It is much appreciated. Alright, so I've got this twine. I need to buy the next size up. Uh, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tie these. I'll reinforce them. Uh, next time I come around with this style rope, it's about three of these, four of these put together. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing. That first one's going to be tricky. A square knot and then I'm gonna twist this around a little extra I'm gonna twist it around my rope here and I'll just uh, with the pressure on that I won't lose it won't unravel on me because I have tension on it all right and this is simply to save time and uh, rope we'll just do three at a time that's why I want to get a, a better quality rope. But I want you to at least have an idea what I'm doing. So, this is rated to maybe 8 to 12 pound pull, I think. This is where an extra person would help. Or uh, if you believe in evolution, which I don't. And again, I'm saying things, but don't take it wrong. Wow, that sounds like it got closer. Uh... I should have a third hand growing out of my chest because you never have enough hands, right? So, you know, evolution dictates I should have a third hand by now. Right. We see how that worked out. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Here we go. Man, come on. There we go. Man, I hope they ain't working their way over here. I 
one more time through here. I know some of you guys are laughing at me, some of the comments I make. I'm not trying to hurt nobody's feelings or nothing. It's just how I like to express myself, you know, just like some of y'all. Some of my views are considered uh, old and outdated. You know, that's fine. Yeah. I might have cut just a little too little rope. But not enough, as most people would say. Seven pound pull. Well, where did that go? There we go. All right, we'll tie it off here and get the proper rope and then do it right. I'll do the bottom, but I'll only do it to hold it in place. Um, then it'll be done right. But you see what I got going here. Let me back up the camera. I think I might have it zoomed in a little bit. Let's see back out. There you go. And I'll give you a side shot here. Okay. There we go. So, it looks maybe odd because we got our poles that we're tying to on the outside where you would think they would be on the inside if I had thought to do that okay shit I may end up retying those <laughs> I just doubled my work but it either way I mean yeah I'm not gonna like the way that looks so I'm gonna have to redo it and yeah, maybe not hell but you get the idea have the poles of course now uh, there are gaps I mean it's not gonna be from the side uh, wind rain proof probably have to pack in some material possibly cut more sticks for the outside too and just pack it with stuff maybe like the bow limbs that we got under the thing there that would be really cool that would block some wind a little bit of moisture and uh, that'll give stuff for me and the kids to do out here together yeah, that's probably what I'm gonna do I just reinforce that wall that'd be pretty awesome all right uh, I'll say bye if I'm done. I'm looking around, see what I'm going to work on, what I got to work with. I think I got another limb right here that I can make a couple sticks out of, and uh, that may be the end of it. We'll see. All right, so recently, other knives I've purchased, I've decided more knots, less tension, it'll be fine. Uh, one of the knives I've purchased, I wanted for a long time, I think I mentioned it in one video, was the uh, Ontario Pilot Survival Knife. I like the knife, the size on the handguard, the top does need to be trimmed off like a lot of people do on it, uh, just like this one, uh, for doing fine work. Uh, that edge on that one, man, that I have only roughly sharpened it on the angle grinder not angle grinder, the one by 30 belt grinder. And it, I sharpened it to about 26 degree angle. And it's, uh, it's much better, but it still needs some work. It's not a come out of the box sharp, let's go knife, you know. And the other one I bought was the SP10, uh, Ontario Spec Plus series that one I can't even uh, cut my hand with it it's a big ass knife marine raider I think is what it's called uh, I had high hopes for that one it needs a lot of work the handle material um, is very very dense and where you grab it underneath they've molded it around uh, you just wield it a little bit and you can tell it is going to eat your finger up so that's going to have to be ground off and fixed so I was kind of disappointed uh, with how sharp those came 
And then I got a deal on a Winchester Bowie. Uh, you've probably seen them at Wally World. I got this one at Academy because they had them for $13. And I said, well, shoot, even a crappy edge, you can fix that. And I had it in the tin. And you couldn't see the sheath, so I thought, well, it's going to be one of them fall apart. It was not. That knife is so freaking sharp. I was very, very surprised. It feels pretty good in the hand. It's got the wooden handles held on with the, uh, the pins. And Okay. So I thought I heard somebody talking. And uh, the sheath is like a Cordura, but it's also lined. It's a lined plastic sheath, so I was very surprised by that. Um, so that was for thirteen dollars, I, I come out ahead on that one. I don't have to do anything to that knife. I just put it back in the tin. I didn't. I haven't brought it out here yet. I'm. I'm wanting to do a lot of testing with this GI Tanto. I like it a lot so far. Shoot, better than my knot tine at this point. I'll put these two together. I don't have enough. But uh, those are other knives I need to do videos on. This is my favorite one for $30. The Air Force Survival, the pilot's knife, hell, it was $49, and it's not as good as the, the Cold Steel. And the Marine Raider is probably the most expensive knife I've ever bought. It was $70, and uh, it, it's about a $30 knife at the way it came to me. So... I got that at Bass Pro Shops. Probably overpaid a little bit. Oh, and I got the uh, Cold Steel uh, Bushman. My wife had the Bowie Bushman, and I got the Bushman. That knife out of the box is good to go. That thing is sharp. It splits wood real good. I've done some batoning with it. Uh, you I'm shooting again. You can do uh, make your fuzz sticks with it real good very sharp knife very light uh, the sheath is the one where you press the handle and everything way down in there it's got a lot of good tension it's not my favorite kind but it's not a knife I'd, I'd wear on my side probably I'd keep it as a spare in my bag but it is a very nice knife all right I'll do another lashing of that and uh, That'd be pretty nice. I know what some of y'all are thinking. What the hell kind of a rip-off video is this? You're out in the woods, you got knives and machetes, and you're not going to do any chopping tests? You sorry bastard. Let's do the GI Tanto. This is... Well, that big around, so... We'll do some chopping. At this point, if I would have put a pattern on here, it would not slip as much. I can hear some of you. So where's the safety glasses? I didn't bring any. my rucksack on the other end to counterweight it. I wish the handle was maybe a little longer with something on the back. This handle can be taken off. It has a, I think it's Torx or Allen's. Yeah. 
Oh shit, there he is. I don't want to break it, I want to chop it. Take the glove off. Would have been quicker with the machete, but if that's all you got, it'll do it. I think I need to take this wrap off, put a, something with some knots. It, as I was swinging, I could feel it just kind of slipping a little bit. That tip catches every time. All right. So I'm going to put this one up in there, measure the next one. All right, you guys have talked to me into doing some demos. So here's something else I bought. Yes, I'm apparently just made of money. Uh, the M48 Commando Tactical Shovel by United Cutlery. They say that the, the sheath is molly compatible. Only problem is the shovel would have to be this way. I guess maybe you've got a up to sideways conversion thing somewhere, maybe good straps I just use an Alice clip hung it off my rucksack um, velcro here I'm probably gonna put just in the middle because I like it a snap this thing is badass 30 bucks I think maybe 39 serrated edge here it's not like a sharp sharp but for hitting something it, it would help chop through they could be sharpened easily uh, this has an edge has a curved edge here. Uh, digs pretty good in the solid ground. I was digging around out here, cutting through roots. There's a lot of cedar trees here. Uh, so I'm gonna use it and cut my next post. This is the same tree that we were cutting on with the GI Tanto. We're at a smaller diameter, but we'll see what it can do. It throws pretty badass. I threw it at the stump in my backyard and uh, the stump is kind of dry rotted, but still I was surprised. It went that far into the stump. Uh, it, it's nice. So here we go, we're gonna chop. Get this positioned. Works much better that way. I always got to think, where's that blade going to go if it misses? And so wear you out. Let's see if this will do. Kind of mauls at it. Good grief. There we go. Let's learn to chop with my left hand. Woo! There's your workout. right into a root so it will chop guess I need to take a file to it help it out a little bit I've used it quite a few times pretty good little tool I like it all right so the one pole that I was doing the demo cuts on 
uh, gave me three more pieces. I'm not going to lash them today. Well, I say that and I keep working. Nah, I'll, I'll lash them next time. I don't want to make nobody mad. Um, so, I've got them. That's what we got going on. Uh, cleaned up my mess. I took all the extra uh, cedar limbs that were laying around. I went ahead and put those inside on the uh, underside here. One, so I could walk around without tripping, and two, to make it nice and cushy. Uh, hopefully, too many critters won't think the same thing. Uh, it's coming along good. Like I said, if I had a little help, it'd go better. So, uh, next week I'll probably just make the girls come with me. Some of that made fun. It made fun for me, at least. And uh, we'll just keep working on it. It, it won't be windproof and everything like I said, but like I said, if we want to put a outside set and bind it up, but we're mostly going to be out here in the summer and spring and fall. Uh, I don't mind coming out here in the winter. Uh, we can work on it then, but the basic wall we'll have up. Got our roof going good. As I'm looking around, I'm seeing places where I want to put benches so you can sit around uh, by the campfire pit and all that. And... Uh, it's fun. I'll probably come out tomorrow, do a little bit more if my wife will let me. And yeah, it sounds like that, but I don't want to, you know, abandon it. We got a kid up too. So it's coming along awesome, and I can't wait till we get to camp out here. I'm going to do work on it as much as I can every day that it's nice. And uh, I appreciate all you guys watching and listening to me rant and watching some of the demos. I didn't get to do the uh, SOG Fast Hawk. It's not too bad. It's nice and light, uh, and it cuts real good. It's got a good edge on it. But cutting through this the one we did the tanto and the shovel on it would take a I think more than three minutes those two videos took uh, but we can do some light chopping with that no problem uh, so keep watching and uh, we'll keep working on it and see how awesome we can make it and uh, thanks for watching